military has released a video of its troops assaulting Russian positions. This is part of their ongoing counter-offensive. Ukraine's eastern commander said his troops advanced by a kilometer near the city of Bakhmut. Meanwhile, Russia said it successfully repelled Ukrainian attacks in three sectors of the eastern front line. At least two civilians were killed as artillery shells struck the Russian-controlled city of Donetsk. Several other civilians were also wounded by the shrapnel. The Russia-installed mayor of Donetsk accused Ukraine for targeting civilians. This comes one day after Russian missiles killed nine Ukrainians in the city of Kramatorsk in the Donetsk region. Russian President Vladimir Putin was greeted by a sea of supporters on Wednesday. Hundreds of people surrounded Putin during his visit to the southern region of Dagestan. The support for Putin comes just days after his authority was challenged by a mutiny led by Wagner chief Yevgeny Prigozhin. Putin also visited the southern city of Rostov-on-Don, which had been taken over by the Wagner mercenaries. Speaking of Putin, US President Joe Biden said the Russian leader had become a pariah around the world. Biden added that it was hard to judge if the recent Wagner mutiny had weakened Putin's power or not. However, Biden had a verbal slip-up when addressing a briefing. He said, and I quote, Putin is lo or rather, Putin is losing the war in Iraq. Ukrainian President Volodymyr Zelensky welcomed his Polish and Lithuanian counterparts to Kiev on Wednesday. In a joint press conference, Poland and Lithuania said that they will support Ukraine's accession to NATO. This comes after Ukraine's entry into NATO remains highly uncertain. NATO will next meet in Lithuania in July to resolve differences over Ukraine's desire for membership. However, NATO has made it clear that Ukraine will not be given membership at the July summit. Poland has received the first batch of 14 Abrams tanks from the US. Warsaw will receive a total of 250 Abram tanks. The deal was signed in Washington DC last year. Abrams are the most advanced tanks manufactured by the US. Clashes between protesters and police officials continued for the second day in France's capital Paris. This is after a teenager was shot and killed by police officials on Wednesday. The boy was killed after he failed to comply with the police at a traffic checkpoint. Agitated demonstrators torched police and civilian vehicles in the suburbs of Paris. French President Emmanuel Macron has criticized the police for their inexcusable behavior. President Macron held an emergency meeting after riots spiraled out of control in many parts of France. He reviewed the situation along with the France's Minister of Interior Affairs. Meanwhile, French police have arrested over 150 protesters. The police officer who allegedly shot and killed the teenager is being investigated for homicide. Protesters tore and burned the Quran outside the central mosque in Sweden's capital Stockholm. On Wednesday, Sweden approved the burning of the Quran as freedom of speech. Police officials arrested one person for alleged agitation against an ethnic or religious group. Another man was arrested by police officials for throwing rocks at the protesters who were burning the holy book. This comes as Sweden seeks membership for NATO. Turkey has said that it will block Sweden's membership due to Islamophobia. A London court has called the UK government's plan to deport migrants to Rwanda as unlawful. Last year, the UK struck a deal with the East African country of Rwanda. Under this, thousands of asylum seekers would be deported from the UK to Rwanda. The fresh ruling is a major setback to UK's Prime Minister Rishi Sunak. The UK continues to face an influx of migrants. Prime Minister Sunak is facing increased pressure from Britons to handle the migrant crisis. A senior leader of India's opposition party was stopped by police officials in the northeastern state of Manipur. Congress party's Rahul Gandhi is in Manipur on a two-day visit. He was stopped by authorities while he was on his way to meet people affected by the violence. Police officials say this was done to prevent possible attacks on the leader's convoy. For the past two months, Manipur has been gripped by ethnic clashes. Iran has filed a complaint against Canada at the United Nations' top court. Tehran has accused Ottawa of violating its sovereign immunity. 
This is after Canada allowed its citizens to seek civil damages from Iran in Canadian courts on allegations of terrorism. Relations between the two countries continue to deteriorate. In 2012, Canada cut diplomatic ties with Iran and listed it as a supporter of terrorism. A passenger train with 190 on board derailed after hitting a truck in the US state of California. At least 8 passengers were injured. Some of the injured had to be rushed to a local hospital. Firefighters safely evacuated others. The cause of the crash is currently being investigated. Train services on the route have been halted until further notice. South Koreans are stocking up on sea salt. This is because they are concerned over Japan's plan to release wastewater into the ocean from the Fukushima nuclear plant. Japan has claimed that the wastewater has been treated and is safe. However, it still has small traces of the radioactive material lithium. Remember, the Fukushima nuclear plant was damaged by an earthquake followed by a tsunami in 2011. In climate, smoke from the Canadian wildfires continues to cover the Toronto skyline. for the third consecutive day Toronto officials have urged residents to stay indoors hospital authorities say that the smog is spiking cases of heart attacks and strokes wildfires in canada have been burning since march a record 160 million tons of carbon has been emitted due to the flames Meanwhile, wildfires are also going on in the southwestern state of the US. At least 1000 people were forced to flee their homes in Arizona state. Firefighting planes have been deployed to control the flames. The fires have touched over 1000 hectares of land. Meanwhile, the southern part of the US is facing a severe heat wave. At least 13 people have died from heat stroke and dehydration in Texas. Temperatures have crossed 38 degrees Celsius. Texas officials are encouraging people to cool off under water fountains and by eating ice cream. Agriculturists in Iraq are planting mangrove saplings near major oil fields. This is being done to protect the coasts and soil from erosion. Tidal flats in Iraq are prone to disaster from storms and floods. The mangrove plants thrive in muddy and salty conditions. Iraq is planning to plant over 4 million mangrove trees. Residents in the UK have called for the clean up of the Thames River. This is after children fell seriously ill after taking a dip in the Thames. The teenagers were admitted to hospitals for vomiting and diarrhea. Activists claim that industries are dumping their waste in the river waters. Meanwhile, recent investigations have found that sewage is also being dumped into the Thames River. Surfer scientists in the US island of Hawaii are catching waves to conduct ocean research. They are using 3D mapping technology to explore underwater reef formations. The group of researchers has already mapped over 1000 reefs just by surfing. They now plan to surf in other Pacific islands to research more coral reefs. In business, credit card giant Visa has struck a deal to acquire Brazilian payment startup Pismo. for 1 billion dollars this is visa's biggest acquisition since 2021 the deal will expand the payment giant's footprint in the latin american region reports say mastercard was also in the run to buy pismo china's tencent and and group said they would allow users to link international credit cards to their platforms tencent the operator of wechat will allow visa credit cards to be linked to wechat pay This will be available from July. The move will make it easier for foreign tourists to make payments in Beijing. The finance ministers of Japan and South Korea met for the first time in 7 years. In the meeting, they decided to revive a 10 billion dollar currency swap deal. Japan's finance head said that the agreement would help both the nations rely on each other during financial emergencies. A total of 130 countries are exploring digital versions of their currencies. This is according to a research by an American think tank, Atlantic Council. The research says that all G20 countries except Argentina are now in the advanced phase of launching them. 11 countries 
including a, m- a number in the Caribbean, have already launched central bank digital currencies or CBDCs. Meanwhile, India and Brazil plan to launch their CBDCs next year. The World Bank has approved $700 million in support for Sri Lanka. About $500 million of the funds will be allocated for budgetary support. The remaining $200 million will be for welfare support. The island nation has been struggling with the worst financial crisis since its independence. Reports say bankrupt crypto firm FTX is planning to revive its flagship international cryptocurrency exchange. It aims to do this through structures such as joint ventures. The company has been holding talks with investors about backing a potential restart of the exchange. In November last year, FTX filed for bankruptcy in one of the crypto industry's most high-profile collapses. National Geographic has reportedly laid off its remaining 19 staff writers. The magazine will no longer be sold on US newsstands. Reports say that the organization's future editorial work will be done by freelance writers and remaining editors. Chinese electronics company Xiaomi is set to lay off employees from its Indian unit. Reports say that the company is looking to bring its headcount down to less than 1,000. The company has been reducing the headcount steadily since the start of the year. Apple's share prices hit record high on Wednesday. The stock price was nearly $190 when the markets closed. This put the tech giant's market value at $2.98 trillion. If this goes higher, Apple will be the first company ever to reach a $3 trillion market capitalization. Twitter CEO Linda Yaccarino is working on measures to bring back advertisers on the platform. She's planning to launch full-screen video advertisements. Reports say Yaccarino is also in talks about a broader partnership with Google. Meanwhile, the company is hoping to renegotiate multiple contracts with companies such as Amazon, Salesforce and IBM. Many of Twitter's advertisers left the platform after Elon Musk bought the company last year. In sports, IPL franchise Rajasthan Royals is set to offer English player Joss Butler a lucrative multi-year contract. Rajasthan is trying to hold Butler for a long-term deal, but the formal offer is yet to be tabled. It is also not clear if Butler will sign the deal. A report by British Daily The Telegraph suggested that this could be a multi-million dollar deal, although the exact amount is yet to be known. Sri Lanka beat Scotland by 82 runs in the World Cup qualifiers. Sri Lanka were all out for 245 runs while batting first. Later, they restricted Scotland for just 163 runs. The Scottish side was bowled out after 29 overs. Sri Lanka's Mahesh Thikshana took three wickets of 41 runs, while Vanindu Hasaranga took two wickets of 42 runs to pave the way for Sri Lanka's win. In another World Cup qualifier match, Ireland beat the United Arab Emirates by 138 runs. This is Ireland's first win of the campaign. Irish player Paul Sterling hit a blistering 162 runs to power his side to 349 while batting first. Thereafter, Ireland bowlers put on a clinical show to restrict UAE to just 210 runs. Ireland's four bowlers took two wickets each in this momentous win. In football, the Chelsea exodus continues as Edward Mendy joins Saudi side Al Ahly. Senegal goalkeeper Mendy's move to the oil-rich kingdom comes after a series of transfers from Chelsea. Engelo Kante and Khalidu Koulibaly have already moved to the Saudi Pro League during this transfer window. No financial details were given about the transfer. However, reports suggest a fee of over $21 million was involved. Arsenal has outbid Manchester City with over $132 million for West Ham player Declan Rice. This agreement sets a new record for an English player's transfer in the Premier League. Both Arsenal and West Ham are still working out the details of the payment terms. But according to a report by The Athletic, the deal has been agreed upon. Alternatively, Chelsea's Sky Havertz has made a move to Arsenal. The 24-year-old has completed his $82 million signing. The German forward played 139 games for Arsenal, scoring 32 goals and adding 15 assists. He is likely to fill a midfield role in Arsenal under Mikel Arteta. 
veteran football manager Jose Mourinho has been handed a 10-day suspension over referee criticism. He wore a microphone to apparently protect himself during the Roma vs Monza match in May. However, after the game, he could not resist a dig at the referee and called him the worst he had ever seen. Now, Mourinho will miss the opening two matches of the Series A season. He has also been imposed with a fine of over $54,000. In tennis, world number one Iga Shiantic has advanced to the Bad Homburg Open quarterfinals. She defeated Jill Taikma 6-3 and 6-1 on Wednesday in the Wimbledon warm-up. Shiantic will next face Russian counterpart Anna Blinkov to for the quarterfinals. She has dominated the women's tennis space since replacing the retired Ash Barty as number one in April 2022. In Kabaddi, India secured its fourth consecutive win in the Asian Championships. India defeated Iran 33-28 in Busan today. India's skipper Pawan Sarawat led the team from the front, scoring 16 of the 33 points. The Indian side will next play Hong Kong on Friday. The final of the Asian Kabaddi Championship is also slated for Friday. Moving to athletics, star gymnast Simon Biles is set to make a comeback after two years. The four-time Olympic gold winner took a two-year break owing to mental health and safety considerations. The pandemic-delayed 2020 Olympics was her last outing. She plans to return to competition at the US Classic in early August. Biles is amongst America's most decorated gymnasts. She has won more than 30 Olympic and World Championship medals to date. In entertainment, White House Press Secretary Karine Jean-Pierre cancelled her appearance on talk show The View. She was supposed to appear on the show yesterday, but she withdrew in a show of respect to the Writers Guild of America members who were striking for better wages. Her segment was filled in with an interview with actor Kim Cottrell. Actor Jane Fonda has called for justice and respect in the SAG AFTRA negotiations with the Alliance of Motion Picture and Television Producers. The Actors Guild contract with the Will will ex expire on the 30th of June. The actors, including Fonda, have said that they will go on strike if the Alliance does not agree to their terms. She also urged support for the WGA strike, saying that she is ready to walk the picket line with the writers. Khan's winning Japanese screenwriter Yuji Sakamoto has inked a five-year deal with Netflix. The deal will see him collaborate with the streaming platform to develop a range of titles. Sakamoto was already producing Netflix's Japanese romance film, In Love and Deep Water. Comedy series The Other Two will end after the second season's finale today. This comes after several staff complaints against show creators Chris Kelly and Sarah Schneider. Show staffers reportedly complained to HR over behaviour on the set and in the writer's room. They alleged that Kelly verbally abused writers and overworked the crew while Schneider enabled this behaviour. K-pop band Tomorrow X Together have announced an exclusive documentary with Disney+. The documentary is titled Tomorrow X Together – A Lost Summer. It follows the band's trip across the US on their 2023 world tour called ACT – Lovesick. The documentary will be available on the streaming platform from the 28th of July. Beauty brand Anastasia Beverly Hills has signed actor Malaika Arora as its first Indian ambassador. Arora will represent the brand at various brand events and campaigns. The partnership aims to reinvent beauty and promote self-assurance. It was announced as part of the brand's 25th anniversary celebrations. Actor Chadwick Boseman will be honoured with a posthumous star on Hollywood Walk of Fame. The announcement was made by the Hollywood Chamber of Commerce for its class of 2024. The actor died at the age of 43 in August 2020 following a long battle with cancer. Some other actors to be inducted in 2024 include Michelle Yeoh and Gal Gadot. The Academy of Motion Pictures and Arts have invited 398 members for its class of 2023. This year, the class is made up of 40% women. Singer Taylor Swift and actors Kiki Palmer and Selma Blair are also invited. From India, director Mani Ratnam and actor NTR Jr. make the cut. Members are eligible to vote for the 96th Oscar ceremony that will take place in March 2024.
over 250 celebrities have signed a letter urging social media platforms to curb LGBTQI hate. The letter asks CEOs of Facebook, Instagram, YouTube, TikTok, and Twitter to enforce policies that protect the community. Some of the signees include actors Elliot Page, Bella Ramsey, and Dan Levy, and singers like Ariana Grande and Camila Cabello. The letter is in association with LGBTQI advocacy organization GLAD and the Human Rights Campaign. And finally, singer Madonna has developed a serious bacterial infection. She was rushed to a hospital in New York after being found unresponsive. The 64-year-old was admitted to the intensive care unit and intubated for several days. Due to this, she has postponed her 43-city celebration tour. She was set to begin touring from Vancouver on the 15th of July.